Over the years, Game Freak has been adding more and more features in Pokemon games. Features like better graphics, double battles, and beauty contests are all something that we've had at some point or another. Sometimes, however, a feature doesn't make it out of development, and so we never get to see it. So subscribe and check out 18 features that you may not have known were removed during development of a Pokemon game. Number one, Mew is one of the most elusive Pokemon out there, and for a long time was even thought to be just a rumor. However, in the first generation of Pokemon games, in the code exists an NPC called Matsumiya who was originally going to trade a Mew for another Mew named Bart. This was removed during development, not because it would have been a silly trade to include, but because Mew was only available as an event Pokemon, and any player who missed the event would have no reason to talk to per Matsumiya. Maybe it's Bart who's been hiding onto the truck all along. Number two, Pokemon Let's Go are remix of the first generation of Pokemon games, however not all features from the original generations were included. While snooping around the game's code, data miners uncovered plans for a safari zone in the code for Pokemon Let's Go. This was later repurposed into Pokemon Go Park, where you can import Pokemon from Pokemon Go. In another area, there is an NPC who says they are a Pokemon nursery lady and also mentions Pokemon breeding. Number three, it's hard to imagine Pokemon Sword and Shield without Gigantamax Pokemon. However, early development builds show that Mega Evolution Pokemon may have been considered to make an appearance. An early screenshot of the splash screen for Pokemon Sword shows Mega Rayquaza in the background, possibly showing us that Mega Evolution could have been a part of Pokemon Sword and Shield. After seeing this, I kind of want to see a Dynamax Mega Gengar. Number four, ever wonder what happens to the final Pokemon that you and your rival leave behind at the start of the game? Well, we may have our answer. Originally in Generation 1, after becoming Pokemon Champion, the player was able to battle none other than Professor Oak. It seems Oak has spent decades doing more than research as his team is the highest level team in the game, with a level 66 Tauros, level 67 Exeggutor, level 68 Arcanine, level 70 Gyarados, and a level 69 final evolved form of the Pokemon left at the start of the game. You'll need to bring your A game to beat this challenge, otherwise your reign as Pokemon Champion may not last very long. Number 5. Throughout the Pokemon series, there have been instances of roaming Pokemon. After a certain in-game event, these legendary or mythic Pokemon will roam the landscape for you to track down and capture. Deep within the code of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, however, exists an unused script that would have allowed Darkrai to be encountered as a roaming Pokemon. As Darkrai was only obtainable legitimately in Diamond and Pearl through an event, this would have been a handy way to add the pitch black Pokemon to your team. Number 6. Pokemon Go is Niantic's Pokeball throwing simulator and yet, however, contains a strange omission. Long-time players who are lucky enough to live near a lot of Pokestops will have no shortage of Pokeballs, Great Balls and Ultra Balls, however there seems to be no way to obtain a Master Ball for those harder to obtain legendaries. If you look inside the game's code, however, there are textures and scripts for a Master Ball which would act exactly the same as in the main series games. If only this were an official item, then I wouldn't have so many legendaries run away. Number 7. Being a remake of Generation 1 means that Pokemon Let's Go is a little lacking in the Pokedex department. Only Meltan and Melmetal are added to the original 151 Pokemon. Or are they? Data miners taking a peek into the game's code have found a fully complete national dex containing all the Pokemon's names, typing data and species names for the rest of the Pokemon. The odd thing though is that when these Pokemon are modded into the game, they all appear as Marowak for some reason. Strange. Number 8. Much like Mew in Generation 1, Arceus was only ever available as an event Pokemon where it was given away to players directly. There does however exist code in the game for an event item called the Azure Flute which would have given the player an encounter with Arceus. The Arceus content doesn't stop there though, because in the code exists a sprite for a question type Arceus. Mystery typing is rarely used in the games, however, it appears there were once plans to include this typing for Arceus. Number 9. When a Pokemon is transferred from another game, its catch location is always shown as the region that the Pokemon came from. This makes it odd that deep within the code for Pokemon Sun and Moon exists a catch location for Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go released in July 2016 and Pokemon Sun and Moon in November 2016, only 4 months afterwards. This didn't leave a lot of time to implement the feature and so it was ultimately cut. I'd imagine the unstable nature of Pokemon Go at the time didn't help either. I guess if Pokemon Go were a Pokemon, it would be a bug type. Number 10. Deep in the code of Pokemon Platinum, there is an unused map in Jubilife City called C01 Gem 0101. When loaded, it only contains a placeholder generic house. However, it shows that early in development, a gym was considered for Jubilife City. I wonder what type the gym leader would have used. Number 11. In most of the later Pokemon games, it's become part of the game to choose your starting player character. However, this feature was considered to be included as early as Generation 1. There even exists promotional art of the game where she is shown wearing white gloves or facing off with red and blue. The female player character did eventually make it into the game as Leaf in the Generation 1 remix, Fire Red, Leaf Green and Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. Number 12. In an odd occurrence of cut content that was actually released, there exists an item in Pokemon Emerald called the Old Sea Map that allows the player to travel to faraway island and encounter a wild Mew. This was for
for years the only way to obtain a shiny Mew as the player could soft reset until the shiny variant appeared. Outside of Japan though, we would never get the opportunity to catch ourselves a shiny Mew as the old sea map was never distributed and so we never managed to take a trip to faraway island. Number 13. Double battles were a staple of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and gave players an entire new challenge when it came to battling other trainers. This feature was however originally considered for Generation 3. In the code of early copies of the game exists a string of text saying Wild Slash V5 and Slash V3 appeared. The Pokemon names would have taken the place of the placeholder text here, however it does appear that plans were in place to have two Pokemon appear at once. Luckily it would only take one more generation before this feature would become available. Number 14. In another occurrence of features that were later fully included, it appears as though Pokemon Sun and Moon were supposed to allow Pokemon to follow the trainer. Pokemon games contain many animations for various attacks, some detailed, some not so detailed. However in the code for Sun and Moon there exists some walking and stopping animations that were never used anywhere in the game. The only place animations like this would be used is the follow feature which would not be introduced in 3D until the Isle of Armor expansion. Who would have thought? Maybe we could have had our Waylords following us around as early as Sun and Moon? Number 15. In Pokemon Red and Blue there exists an unused fly location in the game. There's also a city disconnected from the rest of the map shown in early artwork for the game. The Obsessive Gamer put together a great video exploring the idea of this lost city so be sure to check out their video for more info. Number 16. Anyone who's played Pokemon on X and Y will know of the tragic story and meme that is AZ and Floet. What players don't know however is that AZ's Floet was originally meant to be obtainable in game. AZ's Floet, originally known as the Eternal Flower Floet, has base stats associated with it, a complete move set including a signature move called Light of Ruin which is the strongest fairy move in the game and even has a shiny sprite. Unfortunately however this Pokemon was removed from the game and was never distributed at any events. Who knows, maybe in 3000 years years will get our chance to have an eternal flower floet. Number 17. In Pokemon Platinum, the player receives the Poketech and can upgrade it with useful apps to help you on your journey. There were however additional apps that were planned for event distribution that were ultimately never released. These include a stopwatch, an alarm clock, and even a light switch to turn on and off the bottom screen of the DS. But if I turn off the bottom screen, how do I see the switch to turn it back on? Number 18. There have been many iconic battles throughout the Pokemon franchise, but one of the most popular has to be the ultimate battle of Pokemon Gold and Silver where the player battles Red, the protagonist from Generation 1. The idea of this battle however was also planned to be included in Pokemon Black and White 2. In early versions of the code for Black and White 2 there exists code where the player can face the protagonist from Black and White in the Pokemon World Tournament. If it would have been anything like battling Red I can only imagine what their team would have been like. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Pokemon fact videos. Subscribe!